happy to stand here with all of my colleagues and all of the advocates who have worked so hard on this bill. And I think talking about the bill and, and what it hopes to do in order to expand access and, uh, and freedoms in terms of our democracy is important. But I think it's also critical for us to remember from which we've come. And my aunt many years ago gave me, when I first turned 18 and I voted in my first election, gave me a book of essays from folks in the South and across the country during the Civil Rights Movement, right before 1965, that talked about their experiences with voting, what it was like trying to go to church and as groups would get together packed in the cars, seeing how many in each car would be able to actually get through to the polls after they had to deal with the vigorous poll taxes and the inaccuracies of the voter rolls and the intimidation. And it was interesting that I didn't necessarily have to deal with those same things at the age of 18 because we had already solved this problem. The marches had already taken place. The fights had already been won, or so we thought. Now we find ourselves more in the trenches, now more than ever, to secure those rights for another generation. We think about this in terms of the policy, but I ask you to think about this in terms of the person, of the individual. My grandmother, who's voted at the same place for the last 40 years, all she's had to do is to go into her voting place give her address in her name. And so one election a couple years ago, she goes in and they want a valid ID and driver's license and another form of identification, maybe a birth certificate. And if you think about it, a lot of aging populations don't always have those credentials readily available to show. You think about folks in our own districts who can't get to the polls. And they call to get rides, and, and, and it's told to them, well, we don't provide rides, or we don't have this information for you. We fight hard to protect the rights of gun owners. We fight hard to protect the rights of tax cuts for the rich. We fight hard to protect all of the things that don't matter to us. And I'll tell you this, they will take our votes from our cold, dead hands because we are going to fight hard to ensure that democracy is available to each and every one of us. It's a whole world. To all of those for which we represent. Hubert Humphrey said, in this life, freedom, there is no compromise on it. Everyone should be given the right to a fair and just life, and on that there can be no compromise. We compromise on many things. The right to vote. The right to not be intimidated at polls. The right to not have to deal with poll taxes. That may not be a reality today, but it can be a reality tomorrow if we don't act now. And we must act now, and we will act now, because there is no compromise for freedom. And I ask you all to stand strong for these ideals and for these values. An investment of $1 million, what we pay for, what we invest our dollars in, says a lot about our values in this state. Do we not value the right to vote? Do we not value the power of the ballot box? I'll tell you something. I value the blood shed for every vote in this country since the 60s, and I will value the blood shed for every vote that we will protect in the future. And so together we rise to stand as one to protect this very sacred cause. Thank you very much, Governor.